Part 1 You will hear a man telephone a travel company to book a holiday. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 4. Now the test will begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 4. Good afternoon. Italia Breaks. My name's Margaret. How can I help you? Hi. I'd like to book a short break in Italy. Hotel and flights combined. Anywhere in particular? Yes. Venice, if possible. We've been looking at some of your brochures, and I want to check if you have any special deals. Right. Let's have a look and see what we've got. Right. Mm. OK. I've got the screen up. Can you just give me a few personal details? Sure. First, can I just take your name, please, and a contact telephone number? Certainly. It's John Framlington. That's F R A M. L-I-N-G-T-O-N. And I'll give you my mobile number. I can't always remember it. Yes, here it is. It's 07987 441192. 441192. That's it. And how many people is it for? Just two adults. OK. Any particular price range? It's our first wedding anniversary, and we... Oh, congratulations! Thank you. So, we wanted somewhere nice, but not too expensive. We would like to make it something to remember. Maybe in the medium price range. OK. How many nights do you plan to stay? Five nights only. That gives us plenty of time to do sightseeing and to relax. Right. That's five nights only. And what type of hotel? We initially thought of going for a five-star, but that might be too expensive. So we've been looking at four-star hotels. We've got quite a few in our brochure, but the one I would recommend is the Hotel Scotland. It's four-star, and I know there are rooms available because I have just made a booking for another client there. I didn't notice that one. I don't know how I didn't see it. It's easy to miss them. I've also stayed there myself, as we sometimes have to go and check out the hotels. And of all the ones I visited, this was my favourite. Oh, right. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 5 to 10. What's the hotel like? It has a courtyard for breakfast. It's got 50 rooms. It's just been renovated, and so it's very stylish. Is it in the brochure? It's on page 63. Ah, yes. I can see it's right next to the railway station. Hmm. But what appeals to me most of all is that the hotel's very convenient for all the water buses. And the idea of having a terrace with the room, 
I really find very appealing. These are big pluses. It's probably the most central hotel we have. You might think it would be a bit noisy as it's in the main commuter area and a place where tourists go. But from experience, I can assure you the hotel is very quiet. Most of the rooms are facing away from the main thoroughfare. Can you tell me when you'd like to leave? The 17th of March. Coming back on the 22nd. OK. I'll just check again if there are places available. Two adults sharing. Hotel Scotland. Yes, that's gone through. OK. And how much is the break, including flights? There's a special rate at the moment because it's off-season. For five nights, let's see, it's £716 for a double room and flights. That includes airport taxes, but not insurance. Each? No, for two adults sharing. That doesn't sound too bad at all. What reductions do you have at the moment? Well, if you make the booking before the 17th of February, you get a further 15% reduction, subject to availability. That's a big saving. Yes, it makes the price very reasonable indeed. Do you need travel insurance? Yes, I suppose we better had. For seven-day cover for both of you, it's £17.88. OK. Do you want to book today? I think we should, but can I just check with my wife? Can you hold the booking for me? I can hold it until 1pm. OK, that's fine. I'll get back to you immediately. I'll just give you a reference for the reservation. OK. It's F-A-P-S-J-M-1-5. Thanks. I'll get back to you as soon as I can, and definitely before 1pm. This is too good an offer to miss. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. You will hear a talk by a councillor on plans for the development of an old industrial site. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 13. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 13. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Councillor Norma Boyd, and welcome to this exhibition about the development of the old paper mill factory and gasworks site, which has been lying unused for more than a decade. There has been pressure on the council to use the land to build a training centre and a small business park. However, we have been encouraged by local people to create an open area for the benefit of the community, providing much-needed space for recreation. And I now have pleasure in announcing that the plans for the creation of a park, to be called Park Royal, and for flats, have now been approved. I'm also pleased to announce that we have secured sponsorship from local organisations. More detailed plans of the developments are available from the Council website, details of which are in your pack. In the meantime, I'd just like to take you through the plan here on the screen. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 14 to 20.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 14 to 20. If we start here at the bottom, you can see Parkside Street, where the main entrance to the park is. On the left of the entrance, in the bottom left-hand corner of the plan, there will be a block of 40 studio flats. On the other side of the entrance, there will be some workshops for local businesses. There will also be another entrance here, on the top right, which leads into Pear Street. Here, in the centre of the park, we will have an ornamental lake with paths radiating north, south, east and west to the different areas of the park. In the top right-hand corner, just by the Pear Street entrance, there will be a large sports area with two football pitches and four tennis and volleyball courts. Just here, beside the pitches on the same side of the path, will be an outdoor swimming pool. Now, in the top left-hand corner, a walled flower garden is planned with a rockery and a water feature with walkways, seats and lots of shady areas for the summer. Next to this, a sculpture garden is also planned. Now, let's see. Just here, below the walled garden, there will be a grassy amphitheatre with a permanent covered stage for open-air concerts. We hope that local schools and colleges will use this theatre to showcase student work. In the bottom left-hand corner of the plan, you can see that above the block of flats, there will be a play area for children. And directly to the right of this, just near the main entrance, there will be a wild area. More trees will be planted here, and in the middle will be built an educational centre for use by local schools to encourage children to take care of the wildlife and look after the trees and plants. And finally, in the bottom right-hand corner of the park will be a cafe, opening on to Pear Street. And now for questions. If anyone would like to ask anything, I and my colleagues are only too happy to oblige. Yes, the lady in the front row, if I could have your... That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a female student inquiring about changing her course. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. Hi, my name is Rosanna McLaren. Um, I'm a bit early, but I have an appointment to see the assistant registrar, Andy Matthews, at 10 a.m. Hi, I'm Andy Matthews. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. My tutor advised me to come to see you about changing my course. Yes. I've had an email from your tutor, David Vine. Let me just call it up. Here we are. It says, Tutee Rosanna McLaren is on the Wednesday part-time course 
and wants to change to the distance learning program. Have you any problems with the course itself? Oh no, I love it. I think the course is really worthwhile. The theoretical sessions once a week on Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. are really good. You have two two hour sessions then? Yes, that's it. And I have to say, I think the practical session from 4 through to 9 in the fashion workshops are also good fun. But I am finding it all very tiring, and it makes me too exhausted for my work on Thursdays and Fridays. You work the other four days of the week? Yes, and some Saturdays. I see. So, what do you want to do? I'd like to change to the program with the distance learning component instead of the Wednesday sessions. Yes, that is a possibility. I see from your tutor, Dr. Vine, that he has no problem with this, but you realize it's possible you'll have a different tutor. Yes, I'm aware of that. It's a shame, because he's a very good tutor. What do I need to do now? First, we just need you to fill in this transfer form and the claim form for the reduction in fees. Oh, I didn't realize it was cheaper. Oh, yes. It's a thousand pounds less a year. It gets even better. Can I start the distance learning program from now? I don't see why not. I just need to get a signature from your tutor, which should take only a short time. I'll email it to him now, and then he can sign it and put it in the internal mail. OK. But I also need to go through with you what is involved in the distance learning program to make sure you are clear about everything. Well, I understand I attend the weekend course once a month and that I can book a bench in the fashion workshop at any other time. You have a computer at home for the distance learning? Oh, yes. I have the necessary equipment for making video calls over the internet already. It's the flexibility of the distance learning over the internet that is very useful. And what makes it even more interesting is that I don't have to spend a lot of time traveling to and from the university on the Wednesday. I can adapt it to my own routine, as I will be able to do the theory over the internet from home when I want. The same is true of booking a tutorial online using Skype. Yes, it is amazing, isn't it? It's in its infancy, but it's been up and running for a year now, and it's going rather well. Can I just ask if it's possible to have a face-to-face -face tutorial at any time as well? There is no reason why you shouldn't be able to. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 26 to 30. Now listen carefully and answer questions 26 to 30. What about the assessment for the distance learning? I take it that it's the same as for the other program? Let me see. Each month you are expected to keep a written course diary and to present a seminar paper and at the very end of the course there will be a written exam which will account for 30% of the total marks. What about the coursework? How much does it account for? The design portfolio, which you need to present at the end, accounts for 50%. I would point out just one thing, and that is that on the distance learning program, some tutors like to see the design portfolio twice each term to make sure you're on the right track. But of course you can take it in at any time to show your tutor. And as part of the assessment for the portfolio, you have to present at least one fashion item at a fashion show at the end of the course. Is there anything else? No, that's it. Thank you for all your help. No problem. Hope it all works out well for you now. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turns to part 4. Part 4. You will hear a talk on the effect of architecture on people's mood. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. My group has been doing a project on the importance of architecture in people's lives and whether it has any impact on the lives of people in general. The main part I have played is in the collection of data to find out what effect, if any, various buildings have on people's mood, i.e. whether ugly buildings make people unhappy and whether beautiful buildings do the opposite. We had originally thought of starting measuring people's reactions by using a questionnaire with about 40 questions, which we were going to hand out to people, including students at the university. But we were worried that doing the questionnaire would be too time-consuming for people to fill in, so we gave up the idea. I then asked several of the postgraduate students for advice. One of them came up with the simple idea of showing people images of various buildings from different eras and styles, instead of giving out the questionnaire, and asking them to indicate how they felt on a scale of 1 to 5 about the images, where 1 was unhappy and 5 was very happy. People would also be given the option of not saying what they felt. Using the scale meant that it would be much simpler to record people's reactions. I decided to follow this advice, and so the first stage was to collect a large number of images. I used Google to print off colour images of views of houses and apartment blocks where people live, and different types of buildings where they work. I started with about 30 or 40, and then reduced them to 10 images. Media resources in the Amory building at the Judd Street branch of the university helped me produce the final images. I had them blown up to A4 size, and we used colour rather than black and white to make the detail on the images clearer. We made five sets of images, and for protection when handling, we pasted the images onto hard card. Then, using a machine to wrap them with plastic, we laminated the cards. Five of us targeted different age groups. We went to a local school where we obtained permission to ask a group of teenagers between 11 and 18. We also asked a sample of the general public, including tourists from all over the world, as they exited the Tate Modern in London, what they thought. We aimed to ask people from different age groups, namely 20 to 40 and 50 and over. What our group learnt most from the project was first of all the value of teamwork. And secondly, we found that we had to appoint a leader to stop us pulling in different directions and falling apart. So this turned out to be an invaluable lesson for all of us. As to the findings, for us they proved intriguing. In the end, the sample consisted of 311 respondents. I thought initially that people wouldn't be interested in taking part. With the youngest age group, their reaction was very mixed. It was clear that the youngest group had no pattern of preference at all, as they frequently gave no reaction to the pictures. For the 20 to 40 age group, we found that they tended to score more in the middle range, around three. We found that out of the three groups, the most likely to be favourably affected by the images, that is, they were more likely to score the images as five, were those aged 50 and above and nobody in this age group failed to say what their reaction was, which was unique for the three groups. In total, I have to say that about 71 people indicated that they had no reaction at all to an image. Our general conclusion 
is that we need to find out more about why people react as they do, by perhaps giving them a chance to give reasons for their decisions. I would like to finish there and give my teammates a chance to add anything I've missed or take any questions or suggestions. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.